What's up you guys? My name is Ariana and welcome to my YouTube channel. Now before we hop right into this video, please be sure to like this video, leave me a comment down below, share this video, and also subscribe if you are new. And lastly, follow me on all of my social media platforms. First things first, we're going to do a little unboxing. Today's video is sponsored by Wet Kiss Hair. They are an amazing company. Their communication is great. And y'all, this wig is fire. I'm just going to let y'all know that up front. So here's all the little goodies that they sent me. You know, the edge brush, the bonnet, the wig cap, the lashes, the melt band, and this little cute little silk bag they sent with it. So make sure that you follow them on all of their social media platforms. And if you are looking for an affordable wig, definitely check out their website because this wig is great and it's super affordable. Not even gonna lie to y'all. So yes, y'all, here is the wig straight out of the box. It's already colored. The lace is soft. Y'all, I have no complaints about this wig. Like. So if you are new to wearing colored wigs, like pre-colored wigs, um, it's kind of hit or miss with bleaching the knots in my personal experience. Um, I wanted to bleach the knots on this wig just because I wanted to practice to see if bleaching knots on pre-colored wigs is really going to work. Because sometimes, like let's say you already have a pre-colored red wig, right? Like on the screen. Sometimes the knots will bleach to like a really light pink color, but it won't get to blonde. So then whenever you try to tone it, it, it doesn't give scalp, basically, is what I'm trying to say. So sometimes it's hit or miss. Now, I've watched a video by Slade by Jordan. He says he doesn't like to bleach his pre-colored wig knots, but I don't know. I don't know, y'all. So we just gonna put a pin in that topic, and I'm gonna keep updating y'all as I practice with more and more wigs. But yeah, so we're doing the standard BW2 bleach and 40 volume developer, painting the inside of the frontal, as you guys see. Um, yeah, I've done this in a ton of my other videos, so this is pretty much self-explanatory at this point. I'm to the point now where I like to leave the bleach on the knots for about, I would say anywhere between 30 to 40 minutes, depending on the wig. But I always periodically check the wig like every 10 minutes or so. And I also put the foil on there because it allows it to process properly. Yeah, just watch what I'm doing on the screen. Like, it's pretty much self-explanatory at this point. But I don't know. I, I have a love and hate relationship with bleaching knots. I think depending on the unit and depending on the company that you purchase it from, it's an absolute necessity. But I don't know. It's just hit or miss. But yeah, here's a close up shot so y'all can see that I did push the bleach all the way through to make sure that it gets on the knots. So if y'all aren't pushing the bleach all the way through, that's probably why it's not working. But just... Practice makes perfect, take your time, and just keep watching a ton of videos so you can get better too. So as y'all can see, the knots are bleached. They are brassy and blonde, but I wanted to do that so I can show y'all that some colored wigs do lift. It just depends on the company again. Now I like to tone my knots with both of these products. I got this tip from Larasia Andrea. She normally, well back in the day, she used to just use uh, the cool blue or cool blonde and then towards like her more recent video she started mixing the two together and I like that because the shimmer light tones enough on its own in my opinion but I like the cool blonde because it's like a deeper purple so if there's different tones or shades of blonde on your knots both of them mixed together will ensure that you get all of your knots toned and bleached to be honest just mix them together trust me thank me later now I know y'all saw me try to paint that shimmer lights uh, concoction onto the lace itself. I saw that trick on TikTok and I wanted to see if it would work. Um, honestly, I was just being impatient and I was like, screw this. I don't have time to be painting the lace again. I'm just going to mix it in a little water and dunk it in there. Now another tip, don't use too much water to uh, tone your knots because the more water you put in it, the more diluted it's going to be. And that's not the look we're going for. Referring back to me toning the knots, this video is going way too fast for me to get all this info in. So anyway, back to toning the knots. Um, I left it in there for honestly a very, very long time. I think I left it sitting in there for like three hours. I went grocery shopping. I went to the gym. I did a whole bunch of stuff while that wig was sitting in the mixture. But yeah, it toned the knots just fine. Like it literally, y'all are going to see in a second, it's going to look like scalp. What I'm doing here is my bald cap method. Your girl has been on TikTok religiously trying to figure out different tips and tricks and just studying how different people install their wigs and y'all. It's to the point where I'm about to post a video on all of these wig hacks because I just love it. 
so yeah i'm probably gonna do an updated bald cap in-depth youtube video just so y'all can actually see how i do it this was my first time trying it and i love the results so yeah i'm going to feature that in a future video but yeah self-explanatory bald cap method clean off your skin i used um the yellow can got to be to adhere my bald cap to my face i used to use glue um i don't necessarily hate using glue for the bald cap method it's just sometimes the cleanup process is more time consuming so that's kind of why i switched back to using the hairspray because you can just remove the hairspray with water versus with glue child you're gonna be there all day trying to clean it out also i plucked this wig off camera i don't know why i didn't film it sometimes i just be doing random stuff i don't know what was going on with my brain at that moment but yeah as y'all can see the ball cap is giving I'm using the red label Eben Lace Adhesive. I'm gonna tag it below or put it in the little product section just in case y'all wanna try it. I like the glue. I don't have any pros or cons against the glue. It's just your standard lace glue. Um, it holds down pretty well. I use like two to three layers. I normally will only wear my wig for like four days or so. Y'all, I, I just be all over the place with my hair. It's like I want my hair done, and then now that it's done, I'm already thinking about the next hairstyle I want. <laughs> so then I rip my wig off. So yeah, that's that's me in a nutshell. One thing I will note about this glue, though, I don't know if it's just me being impatient or if I'm applying it wrong or what, but sometimes it takes a while for the glue to dry down clear all the way, and I make sure that my layers are thin. So yeah, I don't know. It might just be me. But as y'all can see, like that little spot, like almost where my middle part would be at, is is looking kind of crazy. And now y'all see me with the tweezers trying to kind of pluck it in a way. I don't know. I'm just trying to get the glue as flat as possible. That way you won't be able to see it underneath the lace once I melt it to my forehead. But yeah, so now we're melting, as you guys can see. Um, I was being impatient because it wasn't all the way clear yet. And I had to go to work, so... I was like, child, it's just going to be a white lace today. Did not care. Um, I don't really have any tips or anything on what I'm doing right now. I'm just trying my best to adhere the lace to the glue without disrupting the glue. Because that's something else that I kind of don't like about doing glue installs. Is if you rub the lace into the glue too hard, you can kind of make the glue come up. Uh, yeah, I've been there, done that. I've, I've made all the wig mistakes you can possibly make at this point. And I'm still not as amazing as I want to be with wig installs, but this is why we're here. We're learning together. <laughs> we're practicing. Um, but I ain't gonna lie, my, in, my installs have gotten a lot better. At least like within the last six months to a year since I've been going crazy with doing a lot of people's hair and practicing. Y'all, I don't know how I'm getting better, but like I said, get your reps up then eventually you will get better. Um, I'm cutting out the ear tabs, making sure I don't cut my ears. Um, another thing, I'm about to cut the lace off, I think. Just a tip on that, I used to use scissors to cut my lace across like my hairline, um, just because I thought it was way easier than the eyebrow razor. But if I'm being honest, I don't know why I ever did that because I'm gonna cut it off with the eyebrow razor in this video and it looks a million times better with an eyebrow razor than it does with scissors in my personal opinion. Um, yeah, so just trust me on that. Get you a fresh eyebrow razor. Another tip from another hairstylist I found, he only uses fresh um, eyebrow razors. He doesn't reuse his eyebrow razors. So that might've been what I was doing wrong back when I was using the razors because I would use it until it gets dull and then I was mad as to why my lace wasn't laying down flat. It's not sharp enough. Yeah, so to further dry down the glue, I am using uh, I, the Fantasia spray. I'm going to link everything down below because I know I'm going to get these names wrong. But yeah, I've just been practicing and trying things off camera, tying my lace down now just to melt it into place. Now I am styling my wig just to go to work. Um, I decided on a side part because I've done enough wig installs with a middle part on myself and clients. I just felt like trying a side part today. Um, one thing I will note about this wig, because it is a 13 by 4, the parting space was not giving what I needed. So it's like a very, very curved side part. I don't know, you kind of have to just practice with wigs and finesse them in whatever ways you can. I am using the My L, I think it's the pomegranate mousse. I like it because it smells really, really good for one, but also it's sticky once it dries down. 
so it doesn't make the hair sticky but like if you wanted to do a glueless install with just molding the hairline with mousse you can do that and then tie your lace like the edges down let it dry for like 10 to 15 minutes and then when you take it off the wig will literally be secured to your head as if you used hairspray i've done it on a few of my clients before and it's great Oh yeah, that little trick y'all just seen me do with the paper towel. I'm using a hot comb that you put in the little stove oven thing. Um, and when I was in cosmetology school, they taught me to put it on either a white towel or a white paper towel, just to make sure that it's not too hot. So if you turn the paper brown, it's too hot to put on your hair, sis. So give it some time, let it cool off. And there's even been some TikToks I've seen, again, religiously been on TikTok. There's videos I've seen of girls like burning their wig hair off of the the lace itself because the hot comb was too hot. So just just make sure you keep a paper towel handy because it's very easy to burn your hair with this type of hot comb. And I even burned a little bit of hairs on this unit. Y'all just are not going to see it. So, you know, a little tidbit of information for you. You're welcome. And I'm just going through hot combing the roots just to make it flat. Um, I didn't really use mousse on that part. I probably could have, but I don't know. I just, I'm just playing around with wigs at this point. I, I'm not gonna say I have no idea what I'm doing, but I'm just trying to perfect my craft. So I can't really verbally explain what I'm doing. You guys just kind of have to practice and trust the process. Cause trust me, you're gonna think that you about to slay your wig and it's probably gonna look terrible for probably the first 15 to 20 installs you do just being honest and then somewhere around like install 30 and 40 you're gonna be like hey somehow this is working i don't know what i'm doing different but it's starting to look like the photos on instagram so just trust the process don't beat yourself up too bad because everybody's not gonna be great at something straight out of the gate now if you are just amazing at laying wigs kudos to you but i'm a regular person who struggles with wigs i'm more of a braider than a wig installer but you know I, i'm trying to get in my bag so like i said practice makes perfect this is a little eyebrow razor trick i was about to talk to y'all about if y'all pay attention closely i'm not cutting the lace with the hand that has the eyebrow razor in it what i'm doing instead is laying the eyebrow razor where i want to cut and then i'm pulling the lace back so if you install wigs on yourself or on clients in my opinion, I think this will prevent you from cutting your client because that's that's not cute. We're not trying to make nobody get injured while you're providing a service to them. We don't like that. And then on top of that, if you spray their hairline with the um, spritz once you're done, if you cut them, they're going to feel it and it's going to burn. We don't like that. Like you're not supposed to be hurting your clients. So just take your time. Try to cut the lace the way that I showed you guys. And just take your time. Make sure you're using a fresh eyebrow razor. Don't reuse it. And yeah. What y'all see me doing now with the spritz is I'm just putting it over the part of the lace that I cut. Because it kind of left a little bit of a white cast. So the spritz will reduce that or minimize that. Now I'm just going in and perfecting my part while that spritz dries down. Um, I don't really have any advice. You kind of just have to be a visual learner when it comes to doing a side part or just hair in general because a lot of things can't be verbally explained. But yeah, I'm just kind of molding my hair in the direction I want it to lay in. Again, perfecting the part even more. Um, I'm about to do the baby hairs and that's really the tutorial part of the video I want to talk to y'all about because y'all, I used to struggle with doing baby hairs and I still struggle. So yeah, we're going to get into that in a second. But as y'all can see, like, that was the part I was talking about where it's like, if your hot comb was too hot, you might burn your hair on your wig. So just kind of be careful with that. So yeah, now we are about to get into the baby hairs. So I've noticed it has to do with the way that you part out the baby hairs. And I know people will say, like, make a C shape. But I don't know, for some reason that just never registered with me. I don't even really have a way to describe the way that I parted the edges out. It's just a visual type of thing. Like you kind of have to know the placement. And once you part it out, you have to know what kind of looks good and what doesn't. And if it's too thick, you have to go in and part it. And as y'all see, I am using the hot comb to comb the baby hairs down in the direction I need them to go in. Doing the same thing with the baby hairs by my ear, just parting it out, making sure I don't burn myself, y'all. Um, 
yeah it's you kind of just have to look at it i wish i was able to explain how to cut them or how to part them out but you just gotta watch and you gotta practice and get your reps up one thing i will say i've tried curling baby hairs up as y'all see right there and i have also tried curling them down um the ones that are by like my temple area i used to curl those up like y'all see and then i would curl the baby hairs by my ears down um but yeah i don't like doing that anymore i know y'all see me doing that on this video but again studying with videos watching slayed by jordan doing baby hairs on myself i like curling all the baby hairs up because it lays flatter on your face for some reason at least in my experience and now I'm just doing the C shape. I'm using Gorilla Snot. Um, you guys can use hairspray, mousse, whatever you want. But I just, I don't know. I just feel like using Gorilla Snot today. I'm still not amazing with my baby hairs. It's really just practice and practice and practice. And eventually you'll get it. I don't know. That's all the advice I have for you. And to not beat yourself up. Don't do that. That's not good. You just got to practice. I will say the more dramatic you make your c shape the more instagram aesthetic you will get if that makes sense because i used to be guilty of just combing my baby hairs down and then to the side and i was wondering why it didn't look curvy like the ig baddies but you literally have to emphasize the curve on the c hopefully that will help y'all don't laugh i know i just did my baby hairs in the last clip but this clip now is two or three days into the future and it was time for me to touch up my wig. So it's actually a win-win because it shows y'all the longevity of this wig and the glue that I used. Um, yeah, the wig was fine. I just, I ran out of time in the last clip to style it the way I wanted to because I had to rush to work because I had a client. And now y'all see me at work and I'm just touching up my hair while I'm in between clients. So yeah, I'm just doing the same baby hair thing again, but this time I'm using mousse instead of the Gorilla Snot. I don't think I have my Gorilla Snot with me at work. But yeah, it's, it's just showing y'all different methods of doing baby hairs. I'm really just doing a touch up at this point. I did notice that we're on like day three of this wig wear, and I noticed that the lace started to get a little dirty as far as like, you know, lint and fabric. And you know, that, that stuff just kind of happens when you wear wigs for longer than a day. Um, but once I used the mousse and just like relayed my hair down, it was decent. Like it still wasn't giving like fresh wig install, but it wasn't terrible. Like I was actually pleasantly surprised I was able to wear this wig for four or five days without me having the urge to like rip my wig off because that's literally me. I don't wear my wig long at all. Like you're going to get like two days out of me at the most. But yeah, so I'm just doing the baby hairs right now. As y'all can see, this mousse works really well too. Um, I have a love-hate relationship with that mousse. It, I don't know, like it smells good, but it don't. Like I don't know how to describe it. But yeah, going back in with the spritz, um, my lace was starting to get kind of dirty towards like the middle part area. So it was kind of tough to make it look good, but I had to do what I had to do because I was at work. So yeah, now I'm just tying it down. This little clip is going to be me styling the hair itself. So this is kind of good. So y'all actually get to see what the hair looks like dry, but also like a wet look type of vibe. What I'm doing now is wetting down my hair with my spritz bottle and I am going in with mousse and I'm just going section by section and defining the curls. This hair is very easy to work with. I used a Denman brush to detangle um i really didn't have to add that much water like the curls it's almost like the curls wanted to define on their own and as y'all see like i used three pumps of mousse on that section thinking that that was going to be enough and it was actually too much so i would say like one uh mousse pump per section like you really don't need that much mousse like the hair naturally wants to define on its own like i said i have no complaints about this wig i really really like it add water add mousse brush it out it was pretty easy like i cannot complain i love this hair i love working with the company they're very sweet once i had all of the sections defined that's when i went in with the denman brush um you guys don't have to do this i just like my curls to be uniform um yeah it's it's giving like y'all see these curls like this wig looks so good i love it like i have no complaints super easy to detangle 
not high maintenance at all like it's literally great i have no complaints about this it took me about five to seven minutes to define my curls and then after that i took the melt band off and voila she is as good as new this is what the curls look like from the back y'all it's giving y'all need this wig like bro like it looks so good but i did think i was like mm, she's cute or whatever but i'm tired of just you know doing like a basic hairstyle side part with the curls like it's cute but we need more so then i was like mm, i've been seeing the instagram girlies adding random braids here and there so i just did me a cute little partial cornrow on the side and i decided to tuck that behind my ear and just kind of like leave it dangling it was cute i really liked it and then on the other side y'all are going to see me go in and do a fishtail braid i low-key got lazy halfway through the fishtail because it was taking way too long and my client was about to come so i was like mm, we're gonna twist the rest of this down now once i got to the end of each of the braids i did add more mousse on it just to kind of help it stay in place i didn't want the braid to unravel but you don't have to use a um, elastic band a rubber band none of that you can just define it with the mousse and just leave it and it will stay but yeah so i'm twisting this down because y'all that that fishtail time consuming i ain't had time for it but yeah so we are at the end of the video here is the final look let me know what y'all think down below in the comments again make sure you subscribe to my channel give this video a big big thumbs up and shop with wet kiss hair because they company is great thanks again for watching i will see you guys in my next video